All right, man. It's almost Thanksgiving. You know what's awesome? What's that? Buddy movies. What makes more sense for Thanksgiving than buddy movies? They, that's when they start coming out on TV and, you know, like you get to watch old classics and some kind of new classics and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> So what's your go-to? Whenever we started chatting about doing this one, you mentioned Bill and Ted. They just had a new Bill and Ted. I haven't seen it yet. Um, My go-to? Well, it, it's. I don't know if this one qualifies. I've, I've been trying to think of racking my brain. I mean, there's there's the obvious ones we will talk about in this show because they are the ultimate buddy movies. But my favorite, and you can tell me if this works or not, but I absolutely love spies like us <laughs> you know i started when i started writing them down i was just doing a brainstorm and um a lot of those saturday night live alumni movies so things like stripes oh yeah and you know planes trains and automobiles and three amigos you know <laughs> like, oh yeah just stuff like that where it's like they're they're totally buddy movies you know yep. they're, they're 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 pals um so yeah, those are hard to hard to do. So we might have to roll those up into a into a ball. But yeah, <laughs> like I'm, I'm right there with you. Weird science. We talked about that one a few. Absolutely. Weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you don't you don't get the Franken Franken girl without buddies hanging out, spending the night talking about That's right. computers and girls. <laughs> but yeah, spies like us to me, man, is just I, I, to me. That's when Chevy Chase was just at the top of his game. Um. Dan Aykroyd is Dan Aykroyd. It really doesn't matter what decade you pick. He's he's Dan Aykroyd. Mm-hmm. And uh but for some reason the scene where they're going to take the test to become FBI agents. Man, when Jimmy Chase goes in there and he's late and the the whole spiel he has there about taking the test and he's he's got cheat notes all over him and Gosh, man, I just, I love that so much, so much. <laughs> yeah, the, that whole, that whole era yeah. was just comedy gold. Yeah. And what's funny, because I know we've, we've probably mentioned it before about music, but, you know, I, and I certainly have mentioned it on Facebook before, which like, certain times in the past when you just didn't know what you had i mean we can we can cue the cinderella song right now of just like you know there once was a time when the radio played new nirvana songs too much or right new you know whatever you know new motley crew or new van halen or new you know it's like man i'm just tired i'm sick and tired of this stupid poison song that's just on every five minutes but then like you didn't know where the world was gonna go all right <laughs> The Nickelback and happened, thing, right? <laughs> in in the nineties, people were complaining that that uh, you know Saturday Night Live wasn't funny. Whenever you have like Dana Carvey and Mike Myers and you know what would become the Wayne's World, yeah. you know guys, because that previous couple generations um, with Dan Aykroyd and Belushi and was just so groundbreakingly hilarious yeah. that yeah they they weren't. They they weren't as funny as them, but they certainly had their moments. But yeah, that whole SNL, you know, you can just you can list them off, right. with the exception of John Candy and Rick Moranis, because they were SCTV. SCTV, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So, what's your go to, man? Well, you know, honestly, I'm I'm gonna have to say that my my straight up like comfort you know, buddy movie is going to probably be Wayne's world. Yeah. I mean that, that movie hit at a time I was in high school. Um, it was still heavy metal. It wasn't, yeah. uh, gr- now, grunge was there, but, but Wayne's world was still true to metal. I mean, oh, yeah. they, they were a couple of mulleted heavy metal guys, you know, from the suburbs and they were, I mean, they were the cool guys and, um, you know, like I identified with those guys very much so because like I played guitar and we were always, we, I mean, I was always around a bunch of creative people, you know, we were always writing stuff and, you know, filming weird stuff on our, on our video cameras and trying to come up with cool ideas for fun things to do. So I really identified, like I wanted a, a, a show 
like Wayne's World. And in oh, fact, yeah. a, a friend of mine and I actually went up to the public access station here in Houston to see if we couldn't pitch. And <laughs> the funny thing was, they didn't care. They're like, yeah, bring it on in. But we didn't have, but you needed to bring in your own, you had to have your own film crew and your own right. cameras. And you like, you couldn't just walk, walk in and like be, have a show <laughs> produced. We're like, oh, well, that's going to be expensive. So. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, we actually, so. I, I yeah, wonder what but, the I wonder what the ratio is for YouTube personalities and podcasters that wanted to be Wayne's World. I bet you that's I bet you those those lines run real close oh, yeah. together. Cause, yeah, because that's definitely I mean, what that's... I wanted to do. I mean, mine was more UHF. When I saw UHF, I was like, <laughs> "Oh man, this would be my dream," you know. <laughs> Just to have an antenna and just to put out whatever you wanted, yeah. you know, just and and the bizarre pitches that people would come in and the way that, you know, the funny thing, <laughs> Weird, Weird Al, one of the striking things about that movie has always been the, he's weird. Yeah. Like, his, it's in his name and people will come in and pitch ideas for shows and his eyebrow goes up like, man, you've lost it. <laughs> you know? like, it's Fun so with cool. phlegm. <laughs> Uh, bowling for burgers. I mean, yeah, it, was, it, was, it has nothing to do with this show, but yeah. Uh, Wayne's World, yeah, man. I think we saw it three times in the theater. And I've got two words for you. Tia Carrera. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah, big time. Oh, yeah, and big time. <laughs> when, 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 I mean, even the covers of her song, like the, the songs that she was doing. Like yeah. She's, she's co you know, like ballroom blitz and stuff. It's like, yeah. she's got some pipes too, you know? <laughs> yeah. I noticed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. But you know, like there was, there was kind of a bunch of those in that same era. Like Bill and Ted was a little bit before that, you know? Um, I, I still and, love the first Bill and Ted so much. It, it's so random and so goofy. And you were saying before we started about, the newest one that's out, and I really want to watch it. So to prime up to watch it, I went back and watched the second one, Bogus Journey. And I saw it in a the theater when it came out. I never walked out of a theater so disappointed as I did with that <laughs> one. And I thought, you know what? 20-some-odd years has gone by. Let's give it another shot. It's still <laughs> terrible, man. It's a terrible <laughs> movie. It's so bad. You know... I barely remember it. I do. I remember liking Bill and Ted so much that whenever the second one came out, I kind of just went with it. Yeah. Um, but the uh, I, and I, I kind of did like the uh, the evil robots. That was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, it had some some points to it that you kind of kept you going along. But man, it just you almost like man, I I really want this to be over. <laughs> you know. <laughs> And, and it's the, a lot of it's the really bad CGI stuff too, because that's right when they were starting to use a lot of that, and mm -hmm. it's just it's not it, it doesn't help it any at all now. So, but yeah, the first one never get tired of it. Yeah, and of course, you know, especially with George Carlin in there. Oh yeah, you know, Rufus. Like, and I love I, I love because you know it's like the the dad's threatening military school. It's like you you, you had those friends. That, like, let's, you know, for whatever reason, maybe they were, you know, neglected or they were able to do stuff. And so, like, it's like, oh, man, my folks would never let me do that. And you got that friend that's just like, oh, man, let's go. Let's do it anyway. You know, but then, like, whenever their parents would clamp down on them, it's, like, almost scary. You're like, right. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you're... Like you're, you're going to military school. It's like, oh man, I've seen I've seen my friend get yelled at like that before. That's not <laughs> fun. And then of course, then then uh, you know, Bill's making fun of Ted for or uh, Ted's making fun of Bill about his his uh, stepmom. It's like, remember how you asked her out and she said no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't I can't laugh too much about that man because my stepmom's only four years older than me. So, I mean, when my dad met her and and he's like, well, she's she's a little embarrassed to to say who she is because she's afraid you'll think badly of her. And we, when he said who it was, I was like, my dad's the coolest man on the planet. He just bagged the, the hottest girl that ever went to our school, you know. 
That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, I live the Bill and Ted life. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> man i'm telling you there, there's you can't compare that movie to, the second one is not even in the shadow of the first one no it's so no, and just so the, good and, and just their their little their language in between each other it's like yeah. they they just they're buds you know yeah it's like oh hey you know it's like i'll remind myself <laughs> like, I'll, I'll wind my watch <laughs> don't, don't forget to remind yourself to wind your watch oh yeah hey man <laughs> hey don't forget to wind your watch, man. <laughs> yeah, it's so ridiculous that, and, and its quirkiness is just what made it work. And I think they tried too hard with the second one instead that, of that's just often, yeah, instead of just letting it happen. Yeah, yeah, that's often in the case where it's like you got an indie movie because we we um, on Scary Dad we talked about uh, De Laurentiis, and if you read that uh, list of movies, yeah, like like I mean. They did not have a committee, like standing over and being like, "Hey, you know, we th- we don't think this fits the mold." It's like almost it had to not fit the mold in order to, be right? A, you know, and um, because yeah, I can't I can't imagine Bill and Ted getting made now the way it got made then, right? Like with you know you know maybe as an indie film or something, but <laughs> like as a studio film, right? Like yeah. <laughs> With with a with I mean pretty famous actors too so it's but yeah Bill and Ted is awesome yeah always love that one um, just the again how bizarre it is and like I've always been a real fan of like I'll I'll mess with with syllables but like calling him beef oven yeah <laughs> right so great <laughs> it's, just, it's so great. And uh, Mr. The Kid. Mr. The Kid. Of... <laughs> like, I mean, take, again, take... It, it, that's just amazing, man. I mean, that that's what made that thing work. It's just how dumb they are. I mean, they were really, you know, Beavis and Butthead for us before Beavis and Butthead came along. But... And that was going to be next on my list Yeah, is Beavis yeah. and Butthead. I mean, you talk about a, a, a cultural phenomenon. Right. And and do you remember Liquid Television on Absolutely. MTV? Oh yeah. And so like, you know, my buddy and I would sit there and just joke, you know, joke and laugh about. But I mean, front baseball was like thirty seconds long. Yeah. You know, it's like the little indie film or the the like the little film festival submissions that they had done, and that was what Liquid Television had kind of been with like Aeon Flux and yeah, the, the Max, the the yeah, the Max, you know, stuff like that. And Beavis and Butthead, it was just like you knew there was something special about Beavis and Butthead, <laughs> and it was just so stupid. But it was like you, all of us knew kids like that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. all of us knew, like maybe not to that extreme, but just kids that would just giggle stupidly at everything. As as we're making this show now, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but man. So I worked at the miniature golf course. It was my second job. Um, so I was in like 10th grade, 11th grade, 11th grade, junior year of high school. And um, I was working at the grocery store. Grocery store closed down. So I went to work at the miniature golf course. And it was it was like an 80s movie, really. I mean, it was in the early 90s, but it was a bunch of teenagers and we had we had this manager. His name was Brian. He's a really nice guy. I'm like not knocking on him, but this dude was about as just he was about as square as they come. Like he didn't get jokes. He was very down. Like he was very business like. But he was the manager of a miniature golf course. Whenever he was like you know in his forties, right. And so like you know you could have a scoop of ice cream at the end of a shift. You know you could have some popcorn. When he wasn't there, like, we were eating the bluebell by the gallon. <laughs> you know, like, popping the popcorn, making the hot dogs. Oh, man. You know, um, hitting on girls as they were coming through and buying, you know. Because k- k- kids would come in on dates and be like, you right. know. <laughs> and um, then Beavis and Butthead came out. And you could almost, you could almost, like, roll back your calendar and see that this was the day before Beavis and Butthead came out. And this is the day after, because yeah. then everybody's accent stopped and pe- 
people would come up and be <laughs> like, hi, I'd like to get, uh, you know, I'd like to get four people to play miniature golf. And then like the register would malfunction. Our mi- register would malfunction a lot. <laughs> it's like you'd punch it in, you'd punch in like four people to play golf at $5 each and it would come up to like $400. <laughs> and then so you like have to you'd have to like get a manager override and like dial it back. And so of course you'd be like, uh, we're like closed or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's just and yeah. everybody had the same accent and everybody said the same stuff. Yep. And all these old people didn't get it and the young people were laughing. It was but yeah, it was like the day before <laughs> and then then every day afterwards. Yeah. So, uh, my yeah, but, my stepbrother uh is the age group of that generation too. So he was catching Beavis and Butthead when he was, you know, 10, 11 years old. <laughs> so it got to where every, every time he spoke, it started off with, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, and he still talks that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he never broke out of that mode, but I, I, I blame Bill. Uh, I blame, uh, uh, Beavis and Butthead for, <laughs> for, for his, his actions. <laughs> for a lot of stuff. <laughs> Well, and then, like, people were, like, burning down their houses because Beavis and Butt-Ed were like, fire, fire, fire. <laughs> and, then, and so, like, Mike Judge, who is a really smart guy. Yeah. You know, Mike, you know, but, that, like, right after they were like, oh, you can't say fire anymore. So then they play that one video of the dude that's on fire running in slow motion across <laughs> right. the screen. And Beavis is just like, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> It was, like, the ultimate, like, finger yeah. to all of the people. <laughs> yeah. He knew it. He knew what he was doing, and that, and that's. I, I mean, that that's the same thing I think about the guys that do uh, South Park too, because they're really that way too. They're they're there's a, there's a brilliance behind their madness that they do. But that's for another show. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> still, I can't believe they're still on this long. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. amazing. I mean, they've pretty much pissed off them. everybody that you can. So I don't see how oh, yeah. they're still on the air. <laughs> <laughs> it's because they're equal opportunity pisser offers. There you go. They only got in trouble. They only only got in trouble when they went after Scientology. Everybody yeah. else is a fair game, right? right. <laughs> so, so since we're talking about Bill and Ted and Beavis and Butthead, to me the next rung, rung in that ladder is Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah. And um, I'm I'm kind of hit or, I'm I'm hit and miss with those guys, uh, but I absolutely love Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back. It's just as stupid as any Bill and Ted. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think I ever saw that all the way through. Actually, oh. Silent with with Strikes Back. Um, I kind of like I loved Kevin Smith when he like I loved Clerks when it first came out, yeah. which is where Jay and Silent sure. Bob came yeah. from, and that's where they're like you know just dealing drugs out in front of the grocery store and making fun of Dante and like right. dancing randomly. And... Yeah. Classic. <laughs> and then in mall rats too. Yeah. And <laughs> he's sitting there like trying to do the Jedi mind track trick with a cigarette and he keeps knocking it out of his hand. <laughs> Stop that man. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, it strikes back to me is, and of course it's, it's one of those that, for some reason, my daughter was a teenager at the time, and she she got her hands on that one, and she wore that movie out, <laughs> which is probably not the best thing for a teenager girl to watch, but uh, she just thought it was so hilarious. I mean, everything about it I was like, okay, you know, I'm I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not. But the more we got to watching it, I mean, you know, of course, it's you got Will Ferrell in there and all these people too, so it's just it's got tons of stuff in it, man. George Carlin, I mean. You know, and that's exactly what it is. It's like, oh, you think Beavis and Butthead was dumb? <laughs> Look at these guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's too. Like, they're, they're, they're kind of came to a point where things are starting to race for the bottom. Yeah. Like, after Beavis and Butthead, where it's just like, yeah. but, <laughs> oh, those poor 90s kids. They didn't know what was coming, man. <laughs> true. True. So, I know we're talking buddy films, but. What about brother films? Do they count as well? Because to me, Blues Brothers is a buddy film. Oh, totally. Blues so, Brothers is on the list. Like, yeah. I was, yeah. And, you Poss- know, possibly like, the best. Just saying. Yeah. The, uh, 
Oh yeah, Blues Brothers for sure. It yeah. was. I mean, you can't you can't really get much more buddy buddy than that. <laughs> <laughs> Fix the lighter. <laughs> So the guy just ordered some dry um, toast, and the other guy ordered four fried chickens and a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> the, you, you know those writing rooms just had to have been so much fun. Oh, really, man. Just like, 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 here's an idea. It's like, do you think it'll fly? It's like, I don't know. Shoot it. Let's see if it flies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the beauty of, of, the, of the 80s, man, was the, the cocaine was running free. So you just, yeah, let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> let's roll oh man because especially that chase scene at the end oh yeah of blues brothers it's like one of the best car chase scenes in the world yeah. it's just like ridiculous but it's so much fun yeah john landis man he was he was cranking it out uh, yeah man great uh, great movie and uh a follow-up brother movie on that which i kind of consider the same would be uh strange brew yeah which is so ridiculous. Yeah. I love that movie, man. The McKenzie brothers. Oh man. Back off, eh, you need, hoser. I, yeah, I need I need to I need to catch back up with that one. I was uh oh. I was trying to watch it the other day and I couldn't get it to stream right. But uh so instead I was like just looking at some old SCTVs oh, where man. he's like talking Great. about how he's gonna raise you gotta raise the mouse. Like they're, they're trying to get a case of beer. Yeah. It's like they found a dead mouse and he's like Takes him like the whole skit to figure out what uh, twelve times twelve is. <laughs> so if you buy if you buy a twelve pack of beer and you raise a little mouse in each in, one in each and then one. claim and, and claim a mouse, you can get a case for each one that's uh, twelve times twelve. It's like a hundred and two hundred and forty four. It's uh, he's like I'm gonna figure it out. He's like, don't right. hurt yourself. <laughs> and that, that's a great point because if you really do think Bill and Ted are dumb, or Beavis and Butthead, or Jay and Silent Bob, <laughs> you got to remember there's a part in this movie where they are giving each other shock therapy <laughs> for fun. <laughs> yeah. All right, my turn, my turn. <laughs> oh man, uh, they used to drive me nuts too because that, that uh, <laughs> the the VHS cover. Where their their, yeah. their mouths are cocked in other opposite directions, and I was like, <laughs> I used to have to think. I'm like, okay, so either they could, either one of them could just go in either direction, or they had to film them to where they were like cocked the opposite <laughs> way. <laughs> like, hey, you need to come over here and stand the other side. <laughs> so funny, uh, so funny. That, that's the the whole SCTV group like you said it's it's kind of lost now i mean everybody knows them individually but you're mm -hmm. like man if you love eugene levy if you love john candy and mckenzie brothers they were all on a show together you know yeah and you go back and you well, watch it like wow this is pretty incredible well too like toronto's not that far from new york either so right. it was like they were all kind of like kind of running those same sort of circles and stuff yep. and you know they're all in each other's movies. I yep. mean, so. And one thing about it, dude, Rick Moranis is just yeah, he, he's he's just untouchable. That dude is awesome in everything he was ever in. Well, even the stuff he was in that sucked was just, he was good in it. I don't know. If un, <laughs> I don't know if untouchable is the word. Being he just got cold cocked walking down the street a few weeks ago. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but he got that's that that yeah, that was probably a bad choice of words. <laughs> But at the same time, though, you kind of like a uh, deep inside. I think majority of us like, man, I wish I'd get my hands on the guy that cold cocked him. <laughs> oh, certainly. Yeah, yeah, that was. That's Rick Moranis, poor man. <laughs> poor dude. That's dark, that's dark <laughs> helmet, man. <laughs> Another buddy movie, Lone Star and Dark Helmet. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Lone, Lone Star and uh, Barf. Barf. <laughs> Dark helmet and his dolls. <laughs> Pizza the Hut. <laughs> oh man. So let's see, what have I got next? Let's go let's go serious. Okay. Because you know, buddy movies, they don't have to necessarily be comedies. That's, that's true. But but um Lethal Weapon, man. Oh yeah. Like those the that was that was a great pairing right there. Absolutely. I mean the the first one, pretty dark. Yeah. You know, but the second one lightened it up and was was, you know, it's still pretty dark, but it was a lot more fun. Yeah, the first one, the first one's pretty rough, 
But uh, but the first one's also got pre pre crazy Gary Busey in it. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, the Lethal Weapon movies are are just iconic, uh, and they're all pretty decent. Uh, I do like the first one, I guess, the best because it's that thing where you saw it first, and it's the one that made the impression. And it is a dark <laughs> movie, dude. It's it's definitely got some yeah. messed up stuff in it. But uh, yeah, I, I I think that's a that's a really solid series of movies. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, I always enjoy. I always enjoyed it. Um, like I said, we, <laughs> I had forgotten probably because each, each one kept getting less and less dark as they went on. Um, <clears throat> but like even part two, where you know where they they toss him off the thing and he sees his girlfriend drowned at the bottom of the. Yeah. It's like ooh, so he has to pop the shoulder out of socket in order to get out of the straight jacket so that yeah. he can go and like yank that dude's house off the mountain. Yeah. That was, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. They're all st- standing in there talking about how they're going to be, you know, doing more crime. And all of a sudden the whole house just kind of shakes. They're like, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Dude's down there with a four by four on a chain. <laughs> Yanking it off its peers. Like, Hell yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. I think we need to take a quick break, listen to a couple trailers and we will come back and talk about some more buddy movies. Now, a motion picture so grand, so magnificent, and so vast, it spans 7,000 years. No way! Yes way! But it starts with Bill. I'm Bill S. Preston! Who was Joan of Arc? And Ted. Noah's wife? We are in danger of flunking most heinously tomorrow. A force from the future. Can we go anywhere we want at any time? You can do anything you want. Is putting history at their fingertips. Let's reach out and touch someone. They're traveling through time. How's it going, royal ugly dudes? Put them in the Iron Maiden. Excellent! Execute them. Bogus. How's it going, dude? And they're making a big impression. Historical babes. Now they're home. Buddy, get together remember who your buddy is. To trash the 20th century. We got a live one here. Keanu Reeves, Alex Winter, Napoleon. We're from history. Billy the Kid. Oh my God. Joan of Arc. Sigmund Freud. Tell me about your mother. You a musician? Beethoven. Genghis Khan! Abraham Lincoln. Party on, dudes! Socrates. George Carlin. We're history. If you guys are really us, what number are we thinking of? 69, dudes! <gasps> Bill and Ted's... Excellent! Excellent! Excellent adventure. Party on, dude. Let's ride! Yeah! The Three Amigos. They were the biggest stars of their day. The Three Amigos are history. But that was yesterday. Look, boys, I know show business. Something always turns up. Telegram for the Three Amigos. Chase. Do you have anything besides Mexican food? Martin Short. <laughs> the Three Amigos. Throw down your gun! Not you, Dusty! Sorry! Hey. You're so brave. Whoa, 
Three amigos. I'll come back one day. Why? All right. <laughs> so it's another serious one. We had we had the. Uh... I don't know if it's serious, but you can't overlook Tango and Cash. That's true. That was a good one. That's pretty hard That's... to beat. <laughs> yeah. Rival guys, and then they're just buds. Yeah. yeah, that's that's one of those that kind of gets overlooked a lot too. I think both of both of those guys are kind of at their prime, and they stuck them together, and it just kind of got snowed over by a whole bunch of other stuff. But it's it's a fun movie. Yeah, and, and it kind of started a, a trend for those kind of flicks too, because you got you know Harley Davidson, the Marble Man, and all these things started coming out that were kind of playing in the same ball field. But mm-hmm. yeah, man, Tango Cash was was a it was a big movie. I mean, it it did really well. Well, there's a lot of blockbusters that kind of get lost in the nostalgia. Yes. Uh, in, in history, like that's not one that I really think about. And when I was doing something for, uh, was doing something on Kurt Russell for a story I was writing, and I was kind of like writing out some of the movies that he was in. I was like, I forgot that he was in that. Like yeah. I remember that movie, but I haven't seen it in for freaking ever. Yeah. But. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. And then, yeah, Harley Davidson and Marlboro Man. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it's, and that's that thing. I think we got, it's kind of like what we were talking about the, with the Rambo stuff. You you get so saturated with that stuff that the, it all starts kind of running together, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, again, that's the 80s for you, man. Just uh, over excess, right, and everything. Yeah. <laughs> if it works, just go with it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it, it's hard for me to not to, you know, I, I'm always going to go back to the, that Saturday Night Live crew because Trading Places is one of those mm-hmm. I never get tired of. Um, Trading Places, 48 Hours. Oh, 48 I mean, Hours, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the, that's a team that you wouldn't think would work. Right. Nick, Nol- Nick Nolte is so serious, but, I mean, yeah. they I mean they really – it Yeah. That's, an, that's another one that, like – you see, you see the trailers for it. You're like, oh man, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I remember that. It was so cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, kind of moving. You know, same, same Saturday Night Live sort of stuff. Saturday Night Live is good because I guess they have a lot of uh, one and two character skits, so they have to come up with you know characters that that resonate. Yeah, but like the David Spade and Chris Farley movies. Oh yeah. So yeah. so you know like Tommy Boy <laughs> was. I mean, that's one of those that you can just watch over and over again. And like, uh, yeah, that I always think of when Tommy Boy. I always think about the end when he's up there making the speech. He's like, I grew up in this town, Jim. <laughs> I remember when your daughter lost her virginity. <laughs> Hell, John, you were there. <laughs> so funny, man. <laughs> he was good, like can't get the sit. He's like, I could, I could, I could stick my head up a butcher's ass. <laughs> It's yeah. selling auto parts, but it's yeah. like can't understand the why he's talking about a butcher, but <laughs> like his customers are just like <laughs> uh, Yeah, man. Oh, that's we, great combination, we, man. We'll we'll still do that. Like, you know, it's like it <laughs> bonk my head on the uh the cabinet door or something. Why you know it's like how you feeling? I'm like, well, you know, it's like, doesn't it hurt here or here? Kind of like right around here where just, there's a big scratch on my face. Right in here. <laughs> right in Not here. Not so much here. <laughs> oh, God. So so years and years ago, we, uh, my wife's cousin got married. And it's, um, at the facility, the parking lot was not like the gravel, but it was that old asphalt that had the gravel kind of stuck on the top. So like the little ball bearing style gravel. It's like really. So she'd been in high heels all night and we'd been drinking. And so we had like 30, 40 yards to walk to the car and she was having trouble on her heels. So she goes, hey, will you give me a piggyback ride? I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. So I hit her up and she's on my back. 
And so, of course, drunken me figured that this would be a funny time to reach back and give her a tickle. Well, when I did, she jumped up higher, and when she jumped up higher, it threw my center of gravity off and just drove my face right into this concrete. <laughs> <laughs> and like i look like the terminator like <laughs> good, good. like right around the uh yeah. my eye socket here and like just had a scratch all down like, and that was the thing she's like well how are you feeling i'm like well like here and here i'm pretty good but like <laughs> right around here not so much uh, uh did you ever see uh, <laughs> uh did you ever see kung pao the movie kung pao Maybe who's in it? Uh, nobody in particular. It's it's a <laughs> it's a just a terrible movie. But this guy bought the footage from two old martial arts film, put them together, and put himself in it. Oh, sweet! And he overdubbed Actually, all I the. I think I might have seen that. Oh, that sounds it's, familiar. The beginning of it sucks, and the ending of it sucks. But everything in the middle is gold. <laughs> <laughs> and and awesome. uh, he uh, there's a scene in it where this martial arts expert is hurt real bad i mean he's been like stabbed and there's a scene where they're like walking up and he's like oh i need to help you he said where does it hurt he goes oh just around the big bloody spot <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that same right kind of mentality <laughs> <laughs> then you get to three amigos man oh yeah uh, the... <laughs> so good Charlie, uh, Chevy Chase again, man, top of his game at this point. Those three together. I, I can't believe they haven't done other movies. Dude, Steve Martin and Martin Short, they're they do comedy tours together. Right. I mean, they're 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 super buds. But um but yeah, dude, from from the top down that entire movie, yeah. like it's so quotable. Yeah. It's like nobody nobody on planet earth ever uses the word plethora unless it's a reference back to absolutely would you say i have a plethora amigos. of presents <laughs> are you gonna hear gonna make it gonna make it gonna make it not gonna <laughs> make it <laughs> oh man great you shot like, the invisible swordsman <laughs> it's, it's like it's like oh then i learned about movie tricks He's like, nobody's that fast. And he's like, I'm that fast. He's like, no, you're not. He's like, brings a, you know, the dude's never, like, never shot a real gun before, but he is that fast. But he has a huge honking pistol. He's like, <laughs> shoots him and then, like, goes flying backwards and knocks himself out. <laughs> it's so great, man. I mean, just, uh, everything about it. I mean, just, I never get tired. When Chevy Chase is sitting and he's singing to the people and he's got the guitar, and he's like, oh. <laughs> and I was just like, whoa. <laughs> the whole so years and years. The lip balm years scene. And... The, you know, the lip balm scene with when he's got the canteen of water and he's just pouring it out everywhere. Lip uh, balm? Just... <laughs> oh, the My Little Buttercup song, dude. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> all those people in the, in, the, in the bar have no idea what's going on. They're thinking just they're like, like cold-blooded killers, you know. Has the sweetest. <laughs> uh, smile! Smile! <laughs> Yeah, fantastic. Oh, man. <laughs> we had yep. just brought that up, too. We were uh, doing an episode of Hell Ming, and we were like, how have we not done Three Amigos? You know? And it's... We had well, pretty much now, the same, had, had the like, same conversation we're having right now. <laughs> even in the quote-alongs. So a couple of years ago, uh, my, my wife bought me a bottle of tequila that's shaped like a skeleton. So it's this little, like, the, the shoulders are the bottle, and then the neck is the... the lip and then it's got a little skull that, yeah. that sticks in the top i don't even know if it's still got booze in it because i don't drink tequila very often and it's been sitting there for a couple of years but it's up there <clears throat> so <laughs> my daughter's like so what's in that one <laughs> she's like i was you know it's tequila she's like what is tequila i'm like uh, it's kind of like beer <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> It's kind of like beer. <laughs> it's kind of like beer <laughs> yeah you can use all that stuff man all the time. And my wife just used to say, good night, Ned, all the time. You know, because the little turtle out in the wilderness. Uh, yeah. That was, oh, yeah. That was one of our date movies back in back in the day. <laughs> yeah. That that never gets old. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. <laughs> so then yep. when we were discussing doing the movie, the, 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 
the buddy movie thing. I was looking for buddy movies to watch, and then I remembered that I have uh, Cheech and Chong's next movie <laughs> on uh, on VHS. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, so Up and Smoke is great. Yeah, but Up and Smoke, Up. I think I think Up and Smoke. It's it's classic, but that's everybody's go to. Right. So I think I think the I think next movie gets overlooked, but next movie has some of the best jokes. I think next movie's better. I, I agree. Um because their their relationship's already established yeah. in that they just are stoned. They just don't care. <laughs> like just, just, just but like, he revs his motorcycle for he's half that, an hour. Get that exhaust running out the window because he's got the motorcycle in the house. <laughs> he revs his motorcycle for half an hour and then finishes that and then turns up his guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And you you had posted out there the the whole Michael Winslow scene in that one Dude. is classic. <laughs> Dude, I can't like. Chong had to have been just absolutely just stoned or have earplugs in not to be cracking up. Yeah. Cause, cause that, that entire sequence, because yeah. it's one shot. Yeah. Like it's just one still cam and then Cheech is in the back making, making, making out with his girlfriend and she keeps <laughs> popping up every now and then and like, <laughs> like the dude's laughing and he's making the noise. <laughs> like yeah. it's the, the can he's like, <laughs> he's like nursing baby it was just yeah. i'm sitting there like i've seen this this scene so many times i can't even see straight and i'm sitting there like in tears yeah. i'm just laughing so hard yeah absolute classic <laughs> man i love uh I, I really like nice dreams uh i love um still smoking Mm-hmm. Where they go to Amsterdam, like the... and everybody thinks they're Burt Reynolds and Dolly Parton. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Burt, Mr. Dolly. <laughs> well, then, you know, it's like the uh, next movie switches it on its on its head a little bit whenever Red comes out. Red, yeah. So, so, so Red comes into town, and Cheech is like, man, I don't want to hang out with my cousin. You know, he's, <laughs> you know, and then Red just turns out to be the most party guy in the world like Cheech goes on this or Chung goes on this massive adventure all night just and then like I forgot um Edie McClure <laughs> where she's like all the, the midwestern mom and she's like clapping her hands and, right like, just, yeah. dude so good and again that's that's one of those movies that like yeah wouldn't get made like that again oh absolutely you know, like, not I think about with I think it's Chong. It's either Chong or Red because it stands up and says, hey, "I'm gonna show you a magic trick. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this. Ain't that a peach? Yeah, I'm gonna turn. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this handkerchief into a fruit. <laughs> Ain't that a peach? <laughs> She's like, I don't get it. The whole rest of the family is just cracking up. <laughs> Everywhere they go, they mess up the entire lives of the people, and then just oh, leave yeah. them with it, holding a bag full of weed. So when the cops do show up, <laughs> they're like. And then yeah. that's Pee Wee Herman in one of his first roles. Oh too. yeah, yeah. Like so, he, he he's the angry angry manager, and then he yeah. shows up the comedy club. No. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's I think that's when I saw him in uh, Nice Dreams. You know, he's in that one too. Mister Lizard, you want a hamburger? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're the guys from the hamburger. Train. Hamburger. <laughs> hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> that's that thing man where you realize all these people are tied into each other you know because they're all in that mm. business together and but yeah man those it, it, it's amazing because i guess it, maybe it was just the times but well even Cheech and chong kind of straightened up their act there towards the end right i mean they made the corsican brothers and some stuff like that was it where it wasn't the typical hippie kind of thing because it's the mm-hmm. 80s now you know yeah and, uh, well, and I think I think I think Cheech actually, because I, I remember listening to Chong on not like Chong's been on Joe Rogan a couple of times, but this was like way back before podcasts. But um, Chong was like, yeah, Cheech always had this business sense, and he was always mm-hmm. writing serious stuff. And he says, and ironically, nobody would take him seriously right. because he was a comedian. But he had this whole backlog of stuff, and he was always going on auditions. He was trying, like Cheech Marin was trying to be a serious actor. Just trying to find the way to break in, and um, 
Chong was like, I was always just more interested in writing jokes. Like I was happy being <clears throat> Cheech and Chong and, you know, so like they kind of broke up and went their separate ways for a while. <laughs> but, um, uh, but yeah, <laughs> so you, when, when I was in the band Thunderpants, right. Um, we would get hired to play private parties quite a bit. So we, we had this, this one private party and it was like in a, I think it was in like February and see Houston weather is very inconsistent at best. Mm. Like, like Halloween, you would plan your costume based on three scenarios. It's either going to be blazing hot or freezing cold yep. or somewhere in between. So you don't, you, you know, like if you're going to, if you're going to be a, a ghost, you only you know, like one sheet, two sheets, or three sheets because like, <laughs> you never can tell. So you have to have those those contingencies in place. But anyway, we played out this 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 uh, country club, and they had a pool, and they wanted to set up by the pool, and it was supposed to get down into the forties, and I think it bottomed out into the high twenties, and we were out there by the pool. Well, I showed up to the thing, and I felt the temperature dropping. We were all dressed as eighties guys, so. I got there. I was dressed, thank God, as Robert Smith from The Cure. <laughs> so I got there and turned around and went home and grabbed some long johns and a couple extra pairs of socks and went back. And so I was just dressed head to toe in black with, you know, with thermals on. My buddy was dressed as Cheech Marin, and he had had to dye his shirt, and it was still wet. Oh, so man. He's in a, so he's, he's in a wet Oh. tank top man <laughs> like playing bass uh we got some pictures and god it was so cold man like playing playing the show but we were got paid like a tremendous amount so we could not bail like we were we were right. we were in yeah but um i'm sitting there playing my guitar and i'm looking at my headstock on my guitar and i've got icicles hanging off the strings <laughs> off the headstock like <laughs> It was that cold, yeah, <laughs> like it's starting to frost up the tip of the guitar. That's crazy. Um, so, so yeah, every now and then I'll hear a song and like my fingers will start turning blue. <laughs> Just like, oh yeah, we used to play that in the band. <laughs> so I saw yeah, I saw Tommy Chung in Nashville in mid nineties doing stand up at at a Zanies club is what it was, and talking about you know you know people always ask me man why we split up. And uh, I have to say is, well, the problem is, is we got rich. He said, you can't make a rich Mexican do anything, man. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he's like, in Up in Smoke, where he's like, oh, man, it's the wedding. They called, they called immigration on themselves. He's yeah. like, you got nothing to worry about unless, unless you don't have a green card. He's like, <laughs> he's like Chinese or something. He gets deported, too. He's like, <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. Cheech and Chong, man. I mean, that, that's that's some of those that you, you, you almost have to tell people, you, you know, in your lifetime, you've kind of have to see one of them just to say you oh. did you know yeah they're 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 amazing yeah <laughs> when chong was on that 70s show yeah he's just like the same character same from, same from guy forever yeah. ago yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right let's see there's probably there's there's I mean these things are endless but uh, let me go back to a serious one because you mentioned uh, mentioned Gary Busey so yeah. we have to mention there's like it's a buddy cop movie you know it's a it's a it's a buddy movie it's undercover but Point Break Point Break with with Patrick Swayze and uh, Keanu, Keanu Reeves, Reeves. Yeah. John, Johnny Utah yeah. <laughs> classic that was that was a great one that's not one they should have remade. <laughs> yeah and that's 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 that curse we're gonna have man i mean I'm, I'm it's like bring up another one you you can throw top gun in the mix too you know but mm -hmm. at the same time you're like well we're getting the follow-up to that and it makes me really nervous <laughs> you know right <laughs> oh uh, what you gonna do you yeah. can't you can't you can't just you can't stop that tide. It's just going to keep rolling. So, yeah, they yeah. feel like they have to redo them and and bring a new generation into but 
you know, just like in everything else you do, you, you lose that originality thing that made it work. So, but you know, it's going to happen. Some of our favorite movies are remakes. Well, that's true. That is true. You just have to wait for, cause <laughs> like, like I said, Fangoria does not like the thing. It didn't like the shining. Right. There's a lot of stuff that it just was like, Oh, this sucks. And then like the movies that it did like for the same year, you don't even, you've never right. heard of them. Right. So sometimes time just has to tell, you know. True. But man, I think this probably gave us a good list of stuff we need to catch up on. Absolutely. Like I want to go watch. Th- I want to go watch Three Amigos right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, spies like us for me, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. But cool. Well, yeah. What's your favorite buddy movie? Did we not mention one that we should have? Um, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff yeah. out there, so. We just touched. Um, we just barely even skimmed the surface there, man. Seriously. So, but yeah, let us know. Hit us up on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, and play around. Post post the funny pictures and uh, <laughs> and, and and check yeah. out Friday mornings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got kind of a trend, uh, a theme going on on Friday mornings, but uh, but yeah, <laughs> we'll catch you next week. Stay awesome. <laughs>